Hi there. Welcome to the More Civil Podcast. This is a podcast for Blacks, Asians, and those who love them. I am Mo, and I am your host, ready to spark your curiosity as I take you on this adventurous ride of exploring cultures through the stories of my guests from all over the world. On this show, we get really personal, discussing salient issues that are relevant to our contemporary age and also building community around them. As our guests exercise courage and vulnerability in sharing their life's experiences, we hope that in turn, you are inspired by them and that you get the courage in it to set your own stories free. Enjoy the ride and thank you so much for listening. back to the show. This is Mo for those joining us for the first time. Thank you. Today's episode will be a little bit different from what you're used to hearing on the podcast, but it's still all going to be informative, we hope. And in exploring this topic, I have a wonderful friend of mine. She's not new to the show. For those who have been following us for a while, you know her already. And so before I do an introduction of who she is, just wanted to say I'm working on the Proust questionnaire. Um, so today with me in the studio is my dear friend and sister, and also my workout buddy, um, Linda Jenna. She's currently doing her PhD at the um, Texas A&M University in Commerce, and she's a lover of Jesus. She cracks me up. She's a little bit introverted, but she, she's very wise and has a lot of words and wisdom. And just spending time with her makes me really feel good as a person. And she knows how to just bring out the qualities and people and, you know, um, feed yourself. So everyone, please join me welcoming Linda to the podcast. Hey, sis. Hey, what up, what up? Oh, that what up? so sweet. Thank you. Oh, no, my pleasure. I remember when I sent this topic to you to um, to kind of talk on it together. You didn't even like, you know, they were like, yeah, I want to do it. I want to say thank you. I'm glad I'm having some positive influence as far as bringing you out of the show. Maybe that's why I have so many introverted friends so I can, we can learn from each other. I think that's just the, the beauty of this. Yeah. So um, what, what we're going to do today, guys, is Lena is going to ask me a bunch of questions and then we'll reflect on the responses and then I'll do the same for her. And but the first part really would be because I because of how long this can potentially take, we will start with you know, um, answering questions, asking her, she will ask me some questions first, and then we can go about you know, um, doing hers later on. So, this episode might be in two parts, let's just see because we have you know, such a short time to record. So, the Proud's question here has its origin in a parlor game that was popularized, though not devised by Marcel Proust, who was a French essayist and novelist. He believed that by answering these questions, an individual will reveal their true nature. Although the questionnaires were invest, inv- invented by the Statistical Society of London in the 18 in 1838. Now, this questionnaire has a set of you know, many questions. I think Vanity Fair's edition has about 35 questions, and they're self-exploratory in nature. And they're designed to help you uncover your outlook on your life, your personality, and offer clarity on how you think and who you truly value most in life. Uh, popular people that have answered it, Aquafina, who I really like, by the way, um, Oscar Wilde, David Bowie, and many others. And so we're going to do it in, you have like very few seconds to respond. The idea is that the first response that comes to your mind, just say that out. And then Linda will go after the fact to review my responses and then we can talk about, you know, why I answered in a particular way. So I'm going to turn it over to Linda right now to start with her questions. So we didn't, we're not going to do all the questions. We're just going to do the te- 10 ones that she posted, spoke, that she chose to ask me. And that's, you know, that's going to be that. So Linda, over to you. <laughs> and you know, what? there's a twist to that because I'm asking 10 questions. However, some of them are like my own questions that I threw in there. <laughs> so I doing the prowls, Jenna. You've already done like modification. You're a true researcher. <laughs> I can see your PhD ways. <laughs> Please do send it my way. <laughs> yes. First question. What is your greatest fear? Dying alone. What do you consider to be the most overrated celebrity? Oof. The president of any country. Okay. What do you consider your greatest achievement? Staying alive. Okay. 
What is the most spontaneous thing you have done lately? I'm going to see a friend in Michigan despite the fear of COVID, of catching COVID. Nice. Um, if you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? Um, give away my money to the poor and no, we'll have to worry about paying the bills or the consequences of just doing that. Mm. What would you sing at a karaoke night? Uh, um, uh, my, my go-to song is um, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, even though I don't do a good job of it because it's a perfect masterpiece. But that's usually what I try to watch every time I do karaoke. And it's super long. <laughs> nice. What is your biggest pet peeve? <sighs> Sheesh. There are many things, but... I want to say... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, nothing really coming to mind, but I know I have tons of them because I've done a particular sub episode on this. I'll just say people who leave the door open. I don't know, like who leaves doors open. I think that's it. Okay, okay. Um, what is on your bucket list this year? I want to travel more. And you know we have that Wyoming trip. I want to go to Korea, I want to go to Europe, I want to go to Wyoming in the USA. It's the least populated states in the US, but yeah. Um, travel, travel more. Got you. Um, what do you think people automatically assume about you when they look at you? Oh, that I'm, because I'm fat, that I'm lazy and, you know, unmotivated about things, or that I'm not even smart, you know, because I'm just fat. Mm, okay. Um, what do you wish you had more time for? My life, I guess. Um, more time to sit in, in the art of nothingness and not have to worry about doing stuff. So there's always time, but I just find it difficult to stay still and reflect on the moment. Mm. Are you up for a few more questions? Yes, yes. All right. Actually, not as well as I thought. Uh, okay, it's going really fast. Um, what is uh, your at bat song, like your walk up song? So in baseball, they do this thing where you have an at bat song. So when it's time for you to bet, when you walk up to the mound, they play your song. So what is your at bat song? Oh my gosh. I don't like this question about music. Like, when people ask you what's your favorite music, um, my taste is very eclectic. It depends on my mood. But um, I guess any pink song is really good for me. I like pink, so. But she's not the only thing I like, and I feel like I'm missing out on other artists that I'm not mentioning. But let's just go with pink. Okay. I love her okay. artistry. What makes you feel accomplished? When I fill my journal out timely and also check that little to-do list either on my Trello or on my phone apps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On my sticky notes when I cross something out that I've done. Thank you. Do you believe in second chances? Oh, I do believe in second chances, but it's on a case-by-case basis. And depends on the aggravation. But above all, I believe in forgiveness regardless. Would you rather have a pause or rewind button in your life? Can it be both? Uh, you gotta pause. Pause. Would you rather? It's one of the... I think other. rewind. I think rewind. <laughs> Control Z, yeah. Undo, yeah. Okay. All right. These are good questions, by the way. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is so hard, right? Oh, this is a good question. I was looking at those questions and thinking... If I got asked these questions, what would be my answers? So I literally was like rehearsing answers for all. You people. never know. Uh, you don't even know what I'm gonna ask you. So I <laughs> guarantee. Well, that's that's kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> so we can we can review my responses and then you can ask you know follow up questions. This is actually gonna be better than I thought as far as the link. Yeah. So I, I think that what was interesting is hearing you answer the questions that were musical. So for example, what's your at bed song? You couldn't come to like a conclusion of this one. So why is it that? Like, is that something like a reflection on um, maybe your music taste or 
maybe sometimes decision making or having favorites is that not a thing oh you're good you should be a co-host on this podcast because <laughs> even we are making me think like i feel like i'm in a therapy session right now it feels good um i think it's a little bit of all of those factors you mentioned definitely one would be um the i i feel i, I believe in music being having that isomodic effect right so I tend to listen to music that connect with my feelings at that moment. So that's why if you shuffle through my playlist, you're like, wait, what? What's that next song again? Nothing matches here. And it's, it's why it's very difficult for me to answer that question. What's your favorite music? Our favorite song. Um, I have a lot of songs that connect with me. I have a lot of songs in different languages than the one I, you know, speak that I don't even really, I know that even translating them to English, I'm not really connecting to the meaning because of, you know, things get lost in translation. So it's a little bit of that, but I think mostly is because of just different songs connect to me. It's why I said it depends on my mood. And of course, decision making, uh, it's very difficult at that moment to like, think of a song. And I feel like when I go to bed later tonight and I wake up tomorrow morning, that one song is going to nag at me. Why didn't you pick me? Why didn't you pick me? But hey. It's what it is. <laughs> Why I love I love a love songs. <laughs> I can relate. I can definitely relate from that. It it can be very difficult to pick like one particular song because yeah. when you have favorites in each genre, and then even in those, you still have like multiple favorites. It's crazy. Yeah. Too much yeah. music. Too much to choose from. So that's it. <laughs> one other question I wanted to follow up on was if you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? And I kind of had another similar question to that one and I skipped it because okay. I kind of felt like okay. that would be the same. And that question was, if money was no object, what would you be doing with your life? Oh, uh, I definitely want to travel the world. I've always said that Anthony Bourdain had my dream job as far as being a food journalist. Um, I love food. If you follow my WhatsApp status, you know, I love good food, not just food, good food. And I love bringing people together through food because I feel like it's one of those things that really unites a lot of us. And so my dream job really would be to travel the world and connect through food and share stories and explore different cultures, especially parts that are not really well told like you know let's travel places that would be my my dream job of what to do so what's keeping you from doing your dream job the streets gotta eat girl like you know <laughs> <laughs> but then i i the way i try to you know narrate that is so I, most people might know that myself and Tyler used to be missionaries when we're you know quite younger in our 20s and we traveled to some parts of africa we did our medical missionary but now because of having firmer roots in the U.S. and trying to get our career started, we don't do that as much. But we're still supporting missionary works. You know, we give back financially. We also do prayer chains and all that. And we, we have some sponsorships in other countries for missionaries as well as for, you know, kids. So I see myself more like a sitting food journalist right now. I share, especially when it comes to like other cultures, I share food from different parts of the world. And I want people, my listeners or people that follow my status to say that these things are not so far-fetched. And if you tend to enjoy food from other cultures, there's no way you want, you want to know more about their story and who they're, what they're like. And I feel like that can also help with, you know, improving cultural curiosity, reducing all of these isms, you know, um, and xenophobic tendencies we tend to have for other cultures. So I'm a sitting for Jamaris right now, but I know once, you know, um, I reach that point of self-actualization, looking at the hierarchy, um, the Maslow hierarchy of needs, I still want to go out there because that's where my heart really belongs. I want to be out there and, you know, travel more and do things that I really, really want to do. Nice. That's quite critical because um, that's definitely one of the things I'll totally enjoy doing. So hence the reason why we're friends. Let's get on the road, girl. Why are you mean first? Just making that time, though. That's just yeah, making that time. I know. I know. Uh, okay. But you have to plan for it because I feel like it's something that might never happen if you don't plan for it. You know? That's very true. That's very true. Yeah. 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 And so um, when, the other question, too, that I thought was quite interesting on your response was, who do you consider to be the most overrated celebrity? And you paused for a moment. Why? Because, number one, celebrity is one word that I still don't know the operational definition of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody right now is an influencer, you yeah. know, which is one of, I think that's one of my pet peeves, the word influencer. So, for any influencer, influencers listening to the, it's not you, it's just the term, it's just the terminology. So, celebrity to me, I think it's, it's so pigeonholed in the sense that 
what you celebrate might not be someone I celebrate, right? So it's why I just chose the president because it's that pivotal member, number one citizen of a particular country. And I feel that there's so much emphasis about, you know, who they are as relative to what they can actually do and if they're even qualified for that job. So that's, that's why I think they're overrated. That's very true. I think for me, like the definition of a celebrity, when I think about celebrity, I think in terms Movie of stars. what the world view as somebody who's popular and influential, that's who they deem as a celebrity. And might I add, they have to be from the Western world. I was thinking about that. When I said presidents, I, 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 I yeah. meant to say, I wanted to like, you know, put that as stars. Like U.S. president, you know, the past one and the one currently there. I think there's just an overemphasis on, you know, and I think the U.S. is just very funny as far as politics, which I'm not gonna go into. But I think a lot of this is just overrated. It's like the class captain; they, ha- half of them don't know what they're doing because you know somebody just shoved them there, and it's like, Ooh, am I supposed to be doing anything now? And then <laughs> it's how I think about presidents. Are they supposed to like get it right because now they're presidents? No, like they make a lot of mistakes and. But then you have support and all that. Captain. You have me at class captain. Yes, yes, that. yes. <laughs> but you're in primary school and then the head boy. I know, right? <laughs> so funny. Yeah, but I think that to be very interesting because all things considered, most celebrities are definitely American. They're either American or they live in America. And they're mostly like, maybe they might be British or something. or Yeah. Yeah. might have been popular in their own country but as soon as they come to america that's when they gain that celebrity status which again, i get an endorsement i agree with you kind of like we i think paris hilton, hilton was created with um being one of the first i guess social media influencer because she, she started um, a little selfie that's hot that's hot and and now yeah. it's like from paris hilton we have like different people and i don't i kind of don't I can't even catch up and I don't I don't yeah. do celebrity news and all that. But in, in I think a lot of the ones I like I like them because of the movies I grew up watching. And so, mm-hmm. you know and with social media you feel like you have access to their lives because they share a lot, right? And it's like, oh, I didn't know that about this person, you know. But a lot of celebrities I actually um I respect are the ones that I know on social media. You know, that are not very active on them. They are the ones I really respect because you only get to hear about them when they give interviews. And I feel like it's more organic that way than just, you know, not that there's anything wrong with sharing your life on social media. Heck, I'm, you know, a lot of these platforms. And then I feel like with us here, we even forget that there's other, other worlds out there. So I'm into mm-hmm. Korean entertainment, right? And I have my celebrities that I like there and, you know, or that I like their work rather. And I, and I try to follow them and see, you know, their processes above and beyond their movies and, you know, um, the writers as well. So... Yeah, it's it's very um, it's a very dicey question to answer. Yeah, that's that's very interesting because I was just thinking about that too, and I was thinking to myself like, why am I on social media? But I'm on social media so I can keep up with people because I have yeah. them all over the world, and it's such yeah. an easy way of keeping up with people and seeing how they're uh-huh. growing and what they're doing and things like that. So I don't necessarily use it as a means of oh let me investigate this person or that or you know it's like how can i stay connected to those that are not as close as far as physically yeah as much as i can but i have an answer for this one and i'm just gonna throw it out there just because i'm asking the questions okay okay (laughs) could be very controversial but i'm just gonna put it out there because um I kind of low-key am like, whatever. <laughs> Mine was Beyonce. Ooh. You know, I part just, of the beehive? <laughs> I, I just feel like she's overrated. Why so? Overrated? I don't know. I just I just think that, like, people um, have put her on this pedestal so much that it's just become ridiculous. And I think part of it is because I'm just rebellious like that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you refuse to buy into that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is it about her that everybody's like, okay, I gotta be a beehive. Like, 
I, I don't get it. And so for me, that puts her on the overrated category because there's so many other people out there that are like, yeah, yeah, doing other things, amazing stuff. Not that she's not doing amazing stuff, but oh, it's just the. I, I get what you mean. I'm not. I won't call myself a beehive um, member. Yeah. Member of that. Uh, but I do get what you mean, and I can definitely see. Mm-hmm. I have friends who definitely adore her. In the moment you just said Beyonce, I, I could feel like some cells in my brain, like, oh no, you know, I imagine this is my friend like, going like that, you know. But I think it, it, it's credit to who she is, like the brand she's built over the years, and because her yeah. followings are really, they're quite loyal and they're massive. You say something bad about her, they come like snakes and, you know, ap- yeah. I'm sorry, bees, and they tell you, it's apologize, apologize, and then before you know it, they're cancelled um, for life, you can't even buy groceries. So. <laughs> Let's just thank God that our livelihood doesn't <laughs> doesn't depend on you know being liked or being that's very put true. on the platform. I, and so I feel like I'm gonna get attacked every time I say that. People are always like, "What? What do you mean?" I don't hate her. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just I'm, I'm just saying I don't understand why people are so obsessed with her. I guess maybe we can have somebody that will respond to this and give us reasons why. Because I I know what you mean. Uh-huh. I know you definitely don't hate her. It's just like yeah. why so much you know fuzz around her as far as her yeah but yeah, I was yeah, yeah. though she she she's oh a she's a she's that, I might just she's a badass like she's mm-hmm. she's one yeah. but off no point intended to like get yeah. to where she is and I feel which like, is like I said I think it's a testament to the kind of branding she's done her, yeah, the and the she's, yeah 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 I think I think Beyonce fans kind of like are in some way remind me of cowboy fans. <laughs> <laughs> but those are like two completely different girl girl I, my, mine was gonna be BTS which is like I don't, I don't you know them they're the boy band from Korea they're really good those boys can sing I mean and I like the fact that they, they really connect to their audience so to their fans so much so that they're everywhere they're almost like you know um, syphilis you know what sorry when I mean syphilis, it's a public health concern at the level, the way these fans are so obsessed about them. Like, you go on, like, um, so I have this app for, like, watching the videos and Korean TV shows. It's called Vicky, and they have a live chat, you know, where you can, like, it's not really live all the time. You can always see comments while you're watching the movies or whatever. You have people just come in the, the, the platform just saying, army fan here, even when it's not, like, anything related to BTS. It's like, oh my gosh, you guys are just a bunch of nuisance. And they're usually these pre um, publicant young girls who are just crazy about BTS. Now, I get I get the influence of BTS. I mean, they've done a lot of things that Korean entertainment entertainers haven't been able to do. They've been on Billboard, you know, they've, they've really won a lot of awards. They've um, broken a lot of records on Billboard, you know, awards and all that. And they really tend to talk about things that connect to their fans, like, you know, mental health, um, growing up, the pains of, you know, teenagehood and all that kind of stuff, which I really, really, really respect because they use their platform a lot. And they have, like, for example, for Eli, they have, like, apps where you can, like, connect with them. Some people haven't chatted with some of them. And so I like that accessibility you have to your idol in a way. But it's yeah. just that the fans can be quite rabid at times. And if you say anything bad about these boys, <laughs> they might come for you. Oh, I don't know if you heard about... They bought out a lot of tickets to one of Donald Trump's um, rallies. Oh no, I didn't. Know. Oh, they bought out like they bought out most of the tickets and people couldn't buy, and then the the stadium was like almost oh. empty. These guys are they're influential. Like, don't play, don't you cannot mess with BTS fans. Wow, That's why. no for like real. My fans. Oh yeah, they they be crazy because those teenagers. What did they live for, right? You know. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'll for your life. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two last follow-ups for you. Okay. Um, first one is okay. Let's start with this one. Let's start with the um, the would you rather question. So we said, would you rather have pause or rewind button in your life? And it's like a would you rather question where you have to pick one. You can't yeah. have both. And, and I paused. <laughs> time with picking one in particular so talk a little bit about that because i thought about do i want to pause time or do i want to rewind i won't lie to you sometimes in my life i go like can i just undo that can i just unsend that email because it wasn't very representative of my of my thoughts i know how communication is so very multi-dimensional in the sense that what your intent the intent you try to portray when you send a message out might not be how the person receives it. And also the mode of communication, like texting, voice notes, phone yeah. call, face-to-face. 
and you're better at one than the other, right? And then you're also oh. assuming that the other person receiving the message is also connecting with your own mode, mode of communication. So I've had, given that I have a professional life, and a, pod, a podcast life where I just, you know, even there's a professionality, professionalism attached to that. Sometimes wires get crossed and if, if it's not a very good day, I might just send out a message that seems very, a little bit passive aggressive and I'm like, that's not me or I want to take that back. Um, good thing Gino has that 30 second undo, but sometimes I need like, can I get that undo like 30 days later, that kind of thing. So that's why I chose the rewind button, you know, all yeah. the pass. Yeah. Totally. I can relate on that. Or those awkward moments where you're like, your response is kind of like, oh, I shouldn't have responded that way. And you think about it and it's like way later. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I live I know. in that lane. I live in that lane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay, so the last one was, what is your biggest pet peeve? So I know as we were talking, you started kind of mentioning some things, but in the beginning you were kind of like, oh, struggling is it because there's like a whole bunch of them or it's is a whole it bunch of them it's a whole bunch even the one I, I mentioned it's just like it's not it there's a whole bunch of them yeah which so I can't not, remember right now <laughs> but I know very, I can be quite finicky quite finicky so there's not one that trumps another that aches you like at all paying for shipping paying for shipping ah uh, I've been uh, spoiled by Amazon so maybe pay yeah. for shipping. Like you buy like two thousand dollars worth and having to pay three ninety nine for shipping. Heck no! Don't please me out. That's my, <laughs> you know. Yes, yeah, you could yeah. do that again. And I feel like I guess with Amazon you kind of like pay for shipping. I in a way, yeah. But you don't, you know, it's kind of like when you say fifty percent off. off. Yeah. Uh, like uh, you know, like <laughs> but then the money's already you know there, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't feel yeah. it. You, you yeah. kind of prepay for it but in a way you also kind of don't because it's not as much compared to if you shop a lot on Amazon it pays off yeah it pays yeah. off yeah. alright yeah. so those are all, all my right. questions oh my god Woo! so we're yeah. done with that now let's move on to you quickly alright all right. so Linda what's your idea of perfect happiness Oh, perfect happiness to me would be like just being at home, doing absolutely nothing with just family around, especially like my nieces and my nephew. All right. What is your greatest fear? Snakes. I cannot stand snakes. I cannot do pictures. I cannot do a dream of snakes. Oh, heights. Heights too. Oh, have you ever like you're sleeping and you dream like you're falling from like oh yeah 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 Yeah. Uh, those are my two biggest fears but snakes definitely i cannot stand (laughs) pictures nothing not even a toy i don't want to get for you for your next (coughs) bird excuse me what's one trait you deploy in yourself um i can be very persistent to a fault okay what is one trait you deploy in others um, not following through. Which living person do you admire? Living person that I admire. Oh, uh, pass. <laughs> I can't even think about why. I'm like, trying. what is your greatest um, extravagance? Uh, my greatest extravagance. Um, I guess my car right now. That's the only thing I can think of. What's your current state of mind? Happy. Which words or phrases do you most overuse? Uh, okay. <laughs> Which talent would you like to most have? Oh. <sighs> Play the piano. I would love to play the piano. Actually, I would love to play all instruments, all kinds of instruments, even the harp. That would be pretty cool. And sing. Which historical figure do you most identify with? Peter. In the Bible? <laughs> like the sanguine? <laughs> like, um, like Peter the disciple? The rock. Yeah, yeah, sanguine. Yeah, that's his um, but nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is it okay. that you most dislike? What do I most dislike? 
Oh, I must. Well, this is kind of like a pet peeve, but I guess I could say I also must dislike it. When I have to repeat myself because somebody is not paying attention, oh, it, I dislike that. Like, I'm talking to you and you're not paying attention, and then you're gonna ask me, "Oh, what did you just say?" Or two minutes later, you're gonna say, "Oh, can you repeat that?" And you were like on your phone or you were doing something else. Ah, oh, it aches me. What do you most value in your friends? Uh, what do I most value in my friends? Just their time. Where would you most like to leave? Uh, oh, so many places. Uh, Scotland, Aberdeen, Scotland. I almost actually went there. Um, if Australia didn't have creatures, I'd love to live in Australia. Um, the Netherlands or Switzerland or New Zealand. So many places. What's an overrated quality in people? Overrated quality in people? Um, Woo, that's a tough one. Overrated. The ability to dance, because I cannot dance. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Oh, that's a good one. Um, change one thing about myself. I would definitely, I kind of low-key want to go with appearance, but then I kind of also don't want to go with appearance. I would probably change the fact that I'm not as confident, even though like maybe some people might not necessarily think so. Just confidence in myself. Self-doubt. There you go. Self-doubt. What is your greatest regret? My greatest regret? Um, my greatest regret is not just going for it. All right, so that brings me to the end of my question. And that was not, <laughs> I have a wild one at the end, but let's see this time. I'm okay. going to ask that, but let's, let's evaluate you. Now, let me put on my, <clears throat> put on my psychologist hot hat for a moment. So when I asked okay. what your idea of, idea of perfect happiness is, the introvert in you came out because you still want to stay at home with your family. And doing absolutely nothing. How does one not do absolutely nothing? But then I remember um, Winnie the Pooh, Christopher Robin saying, doing nothing often is the best, very best of something. So, um, busy doing yeah. nothing. <laughs> I absolutely love to just be at home doing nothing. Like nothing to me could be, maybe I'm just reading a book or I'm just home just chilling. I could literally stare at the wall sometimes and just be like, okay with it. And I'm like content. I could just, you know, stare at the ceiling. I, like mean, I think it just ties to your personality. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that even when given the opportunity to do, you know, um, to have that blissfulness, you chose doing nothing. And there's an art to that. It's, it's staying, staying in the moment, which is something I really admire about you. Because I'm not very skilled at that. Now, the well, next question was, What's your greatest fear, snakes? I do share that with you, by the way. I hate things that crawl, lizards, geckos, like, I hate, I hate snakes. And I always hear, like, oh, not all snakes are poisonous. And the tips they give you for finding out, you know, if a snake is poisonous or not, requires you staying at a position that makes you vulnerable enough to be attacked by a snake. So I don't get that whole fallacy, like, yo, every snake to me is dangerous. Every one of them, unless otherwise proven. <laughs> Baby snakes. snakes, big snakes, small snakes, whatever. And, and a snake. And I think there's it. a primordial state to it. I think it's it's just beyond just, you know, me. I feel like it's something that is transcendental, like almost like uh I don't know how to explain it. Like from my whole body, like everything about me just like my body just rises up. I can't stand it. Yeah. Totally. And that's actually one of my biggest fears is like I'm gonna one of these days a snake is just gonna bite me. <laughs> or I'm going to come across a snake or something. Like, everything in the reptile family, no bueno. It's, they're all the same. Like, uh, you went to Burning House, right? Did you guys have the snake lizards? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were the coast. bane of my existence. Oh. Like, no, snake lizards. Snake lizard. Linda, they are a cross between a snake and a lizard. Even just saying right now, my, my skin is breaking out into goosebumps. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's move on, man. Yeah, move it on, move it on. So, for 
but you said the trait to deploy yourself is persistence. But I would say that's one of the things I like about you because it's really helped me with working out with you because you always like you have your pushing, you know, to like get to people to um, make their goals. So why why don't you like that trait about yourself? I'm curious, you know. Because I feel like there are times when persistence can be annoying to people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm persistent to the to to a fault sometimes. I will whether it's reaching out to people or trying to get answers for something. I'm always persistent. Um I think sometimes I'm also bad at not picking up cues like those social cues um where people kind of want to drop it. And for me I'm like okay, I understand like okay, let's get back to that. Like what happened here? I just really want to understand. And and for me it's I have this inquisitive mind. I'm always wanting to understand a lot of things. So something happens, I'm like, oh, "Okay, this happened, but why? Okay, what were you thinking? Okay, this happened. Okay." So I can be very persistent to a fault. Um or maybe somebody doesn't want you to reach out to them. I will keep reaching out to them until like maybe they block me or something. Um yeah. It can be to a fault. But I appreciate you. Though. I I I get what you mean. I think It's just the beauty of most traits out there. There are good parts to it and um, there are bad sides to it. It's just having to like make sure that your benefit, the benefit of having those traits, you know, uh, outweighs like the risk of, of annoying others. But I can definitely see yeah. how that can be a positive or a negative. Now, for the traits of supporting others, it's not following through. Oh my gosh, and I could relate. But express it a little bit on that. Oh, I said a little bit on that. Um, not following through. So, like you mentioned earlier, I think this comes with the territory of if I was given a, an opportunity of doing something or staying at home, I'd rather stay at home. So, if I get to do something, then I've worked myself up to doing it. And then if you don't follow through and do your end of it, then I'm kind of like, I could have just <laughs> done what I could have You know, and so follow through sometimes. Or when you say you're going to do something and you just don't do it and you don't even say anything about it, um I think sometimes that's also kind of like like really what are we doing here? So it can be in various forms, right? It's it's in various forms. Yeah. Um yeah. Customer service. I I hate it when people say, "Oh yeah, we're going to work on this." And then Three I will call you back. I will call you back. We've taken your message. We'll, we'll work. We'll call you back. Never call back. Exactly. And then it's like three months down the road, you still haven't heard back from those people, and it's like, so you think you're taking me for a fool? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you think I'm an idiot? That's that's what we're translating here. So I agree. Yeah. I agree. I remember when I first moved here to the US, and people would say, "Oh, let's only have lunch sometime," and it never happened. I was like, first, why would you invite me to go have? food with you and you're not putting you know you're not like holding your hand of the bargain and then exactly. it never and then the yeah. time I tried to remind you and I looked like oh we don't mean it like that was really very confusing for me so yeah like that that was just like something to fill the space I up. know don't do that food What? is very serious guys don't use food if you tell me we should totally go watch the sky together some other time I might not take it yeah. seriously but when you say let's totally have lunch together that, that's just yeah. wrong that's so wrong you know Now you pass. Sorry, go ahead. I've noticed that I've kind of there are some times when I kind of tend to do that, and I have to catch myself oh, and yeah. remind myself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm such a big scheduler. I will put anything that I say or tell somebody. I put it on the schedule right then because then I'm like, so I can make sure I do it. Um, and sometimes people are like, oh, let's hang out, and I'll be like, okay, when? But they don't have an answer. But they just ask me, let's hang out. So I'm like, okay, well, you let me know when you want to hang out. So for that, I usually don't follow through on those yeah. because then I'm on you to work out your schedule and stuff. So I, I'm not perfect in it. I do have my mishaps and things that I do as well. That yeah. No, I so. mean I can see how your persistence might end up being people like, oh, let's do it, do that, let's set up a date. But I have some friends I know that unless I like call them and put it on schedule, it's never gonna happen. Not because they're trying to be, you know, um, double mouthed about things. It's just that I don't remember, and I always remember those things. So I'm like, hey, when are we having that lunch? Like, I'm actually free this weekend. You want to get together? So that way, I'm putting 
but if I don't bother about you, then I don't really care about you. That's just what it means. Yeah, like we need to plan this for your main trip. Girl, I'm gonna <laughs> come on you. Like let your persistence. Like okay, so for those that don't really know, myself and Minda decided hey. last year when she came here for Christmas in December that we just wanted to go to Wyoming. Why Wyoming? Well, for me, it's because it's one of the it's actually the least populated states in the U.S. and it has a lot of countryside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Part. Yes, that's that. And just like, drive to that other side of town because we've never been to that part of the country before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. hit me but up, girl. Fun. October yeah, is that open. It's because that's my availability has become scarce. I understand. A little bit. I understand. Hey, mm-hmm. October is looking good. Hit me up. Um, so you passed off on passed off on a question about which living person do you most admire. I can see why that can be quite problematic. Is it because you don't you have so many people to pick from, or you don't really put somebody up at that level of celebrity worshiping? You know what? Um, I don't even think there's there's a lot of people that I admire. Like for example, Darlene Del- Chark, I admire her. Bill Johnson, I admire. But for me to say like to put a blanket and say this person absolutely that's difficult kind of with the song situation there's so many to choose from so many people that I admire so many people I look at and and say wow I would love to like maybe sit at their feet and like maybe grab lunch with them one day and have a conversation or them speak into my life or learn something from them so it's hard to pick one individual person because there's a lot there's a lot but again like you said I try not to put people on pedestals like that because in life I've learned that um, people are humans um, and it, it's very easy to get hurt when you put somebody on a pedestal especially when they do something and they like that kind of like disrupts your world and so I try very hard to keep that in perspective and say they're just a woman being like me you know yeah so when i see a celebrity walking down the street am i gonna be like oh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> most definitely but one thing that i've also learned to do is like three seconds later linda they're just a person keep mo- keep it moving yeah. you know they need their privacy let them have that lunch they're having with your friends you don't have to interrupt yeah absolutely and, and that's a good reminder right there about putting people on the pedestal I think it's more about us because whatever we fix our object of attention to it speaks more about us than the object itself you know and idols can take different shapes and, and by idol I don't mean like celebrity <laughs> idol I mean like idol like something that takes up significant amount of interest in your life can be quite problematic because when they fall short of whatever standards you put them there they weren't telling you that they were all that right by the way so but then think about what they always tell people that, you know, argue against is that think about the, the mistakes you made in your life. Imagine what's glaring for the world to see. How would you feel? You know, it's where I have a problem with cancel yeah. culture. I have a problem with cancel culture, which is a totally different topic. In the sense that as Christians, especially, we cannot afford to be canceling people. Accountability, yes, but canceling them, like Jesus paid the ultimate price. He was canceled, you know, thank God for his death. We, we can like, you know, talk about resurrection and salvation. Like the yeah. very idea of um, cancel culture is antithetical to Christians, which is what really it's it's what is you know what I'm saying? Like it's culture. Like if we were to look into your life, you we probably would cancel you too. Oh, tell me about that. Like you know, so let's keep it moving, um, guys. Yeah, accountability, <laughs> give room for growth, call things out, um, pray for them. Uh, if they need to be jailed for whatever they do, yes be part of that process you can hand them over to the cops mm-hmm. but casting somebody yeah. and just love people it's just too much just it's just too much it's, oh, All right. oh there's a good episode on podcast about that it's um Jackie Hill Perry and uh Preston Perry oh uh, the Perry with the Perry oh good mm-hmm. I should listen to that I haven't yeah. listened to a lot of the episode in a while I like them Oh wait, your current state of mind is happy. Why is that? I like it though. Um, you know what? I don't know. At any point in time, I'm just always like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's the it's the fruit of a spirit. I'll chuck it down to that. I know. I'm like one. I'm 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 hanging out with Mo, and this is fun. Something new, pulling me out of my element. You know. 
And then, I don't know, I just feel like happy, happy. I'm just content and I'm just happy. I walked into work the other day and the director of the of the department I work in was like, I'm not a morning person. And then I said, I was looking at them and I said, well, I don't know if I'm a morning person or a night person or anything. And <laughs> she goes, Linda, you're just bubbly. <laughs> That's the end of it. You're just bubbly, period. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Just happy, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Now, when you answer this part, this next question, I could just totally relate with it as an immigrant to this country whose tone, by the way, I'm not going to call it accent because everybody has an accent. Ten years in this country, I still have to spell my name in an alphabetical way. A for Apple or I can do the radio signs. A for Alpha, B for Bravo, C for Charlie and the rest. What is it that you most dislike? Repeating yourself in a phone call. Girl, like, I have been there, done that. You know? So, but just explain to us again. Why do you hate that? I understand why you hate it, but let's hear from your words. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. You ask me again because <laughs> my first I, I was like, what, what, what is it that you most dislike? You're like repeating yourself. <laughs> Especially when I I think your context was being taken somebody and they blank out and then you have to like take the time. So I I I, I kind of took it away from your own context. Okay. Yeah. You took that away. So the, the answer that I was gonna give I was like, Linda, you love Jesus too much. That cannot be an answer. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it? What was it? Is it something we can say on the podcast or not? Uh, uh, I could say it on the podcast, it wouldn't matter, but um I think for me it's because um when you say something and people ask you to repeat yourself because of the accent situation, that's also one thing that it it just drives me crazy. I'm like, I know you understood what I said because sometimes I will literally pause before I repeat myself. And then they go, oh, you mean this? And then I'm like, so why were you asking? Because you say it in the way they know it, you know? It's just rude. A clear culture and patience. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so my first experience with this, my first experience was with my first roommate in undergrad. Um, She was African-American and she would always ask me, what did you say? Like what? All the time. Like everything I said, she had to follow up with what did you say? So I kind of felt like it was kind of like a fallback thing for her in the end because she would literally i guess she thought i was from like somewhere down in the village in the in the bushes where there has not been any electricity no buildings no nothing i I seriously think that um i used to use the word compulsory a lot i grew up using the word british yeah we were always in the british education system and i didn't use i didn't use the word mandatory like mandatory was an alternative but i didn't use that I had enough sense to say, hey, is this meeting compulsory? And she would always be like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, that's not even a word. And I'm like, sister, seriously? (laughs) You know? So just those little things. I think it's just annoying when people don't take the time to listen. They're just wanting to respond a certain way and they don't hear what you're saying. So they have to ask you to repeat. I think that's the biggest problem. Amen. Um, Amen. And not everybody will yeah. have names like Betty, Karen. Their names like Botolani. Exactly. Like if I can learn all of your complex last names, just listen. I will spell it for you anyhow. But don't make me go through the alphabet again. It's really annoying. Dear customer service reps. Speaking of names, you know, I had somebody legit look at me and say, I still think you're lying about your name. Your, li- your name is little not looked at you. Like, you have an African name that you just don't want to tell us. Like, I was like, what do you mean? This is the name that I just... Like, what? I couldn't understand. And this is somebody that I had known for a while, and they legit looked me in the face and said that. Yeah, we can't, we can't, <laughs> fix, we can't, we can't fix so many things. Mind blown. Now, um... Mind blown. Yeah, girl, there's so many I have to say about that. It's just been a lot of, you know, trauma in me as far as that name and repeating ourselves because we don't sound the way they sound. Y'all have, like, different accents from the we south to the north. We keep, we keep track of everything, you know? But no, is it so much for you to just listen? No. You don't want to. Cultural impatience. Now, 
Now, um, what is that thing? I asked you about what, who's that historical figure you most identify with? You said Peter. I was going to pick you for a Paul kind of person, just because, you know, temperament-wise. But tell me, tell me about Peter. Peter the denier. What about Peter do you? <laughs> um, you know, I wouldn't, that's an interesting pick for me. I would actually ask that question back to you. Why Paul? Yeah. But let me answer your question, Peter. I picked Peter because Peter kind of like would say whatever came to his mind. He wouldn't think through things. And in awkward situations, Peter was always the first to say something. And it would be like an off the chain say something. And I feel like that's how I am at times. Um, I could be in situations where I'll just say whatever comes to mind first. And then think about it later. And be like, oh, what was I thinking? Or sometimes, I, I relate the most with him too when it's kind of like jumping on the gun and just like, let's get it done, let's let's do it right now kind of situation. And um, there are moments where I'm like that as well. But I'm that person that, okay, this is not working. I'm going to go back to what I know to do best because, uh, <laughs> you know, and that's what Peter did, right? He, he was like, okay, Jesus has died. He's gone. I'm going back to fishing. And I feel like sometimes in life I do do that. I revert to what's comfortable instead of like getting in that uncomfortable zone and growing in it and saying, okay, what is it that I can learn? I think sometimes I'm, I'm very quick to say, okay, how can we get out of it and go back to where we were before? Um, and so I've had to learn really hard not to go back to that. And sometimes I still do. Um, you know, you were mentioning that I'm such an introvert. I, I would say like now, I would say not as much as I used to be because I wouldn't have been sitting here talking during this whole situation. I would have been like, oh, no, I'm busy. You know, I have every excuse in the book oh, wow. <laughs> ready to be. Out. I feel like without, would you um, respond to that question? I could, I really got to know more about you and I, it makes sense now I chose Peter. It's, it's not, yeah. It's, it's where you see yourself growing to be, you know, so that's that's really nice. Yeah. And I chose him Paul because Paul was very I mean, he had a very rough and <laughs> rowdy beginning with his heavy persecution of the church but I could see him just grow into it and take up that role of, you know, being clear and he'll say things that even when I send you letters, I might be bold, but in person, I might be timid and I just checked it down to your personality but Paul had yeah. always had the right words to say in certain situations. <laughs> Peter, I would probably choose Peter because I'm used to like saying things and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to hurt you, but can I just say that back again? That's why I chose that rewind button, like undo, 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 undo. But hey. I think it's so interesting because for me, I'm I'm so, I'm so analytical about myself. So when I speak, when I get home, I literally take a moment to say, what did I talk about today? And what could I have said better? What is it that I did and how could I have done it better? I, I always do that. And those conversations are constantly going on in my head. And so it's interesting that you would say that because I think sometimes it's a God thing. I just literally will just speak out. I know sometimes it might not come out well because it hasn't been well thought through or I haven't processed it quite as long as I would love to. Um, but I would also think the opposite for you because I, I feel like you're so insightful and you're always on point with questions and being inquisitive and digging deeper. So I wouldn't see you being like yeah. the opposite yeah. of that. So we kind of have roles here. I guess so. Because the way we think of ourselves, uh, we see the world. As we were saying, I always have the right words to say. I'm like, have you checked in with Tyler with yeah. his response? Because he would tell you I always have the right words to say. But I appreciate that. See why one of the things I like about you, you tend to like see beyond, you know, uh, like limitations as friends. So that's good. Um, <laughs> we should run enough now really quickly so you can, we can get this part done. But I was curious to know this. When I asked you about the places you like to most live, you, you were very specific. You like operating in Scotland. And that goes to show it wasn't just like a like a country, you know how to say Africa. I want to go to Africa someday. Like you had, you had a particular place in Scotland. So why Aberdeen? I know it has a lot of um, historical um, representation as far as Christianity, you know, had a very strong startup in Scotland. But why Scotland? Like why Aberdeen? That's good. 
to my Aberdeen specifically. So, you know, I almost never came to the U.S. I almost um, went to Scotland for my um, for my bachelor's degree. I was set. I was going to go to Robert Gordon University. It was so beautiful. I fell in love with the place. I did so much research on it. And my dad visited the U.S. with um, one of the one of the guys that he worked for. And he came back. The next thing I know was I was going to Texas. Um, but my heart was set on Scotland. It's so beautiful. I love nature. Um, even though I'm like very not a snake person or creatures person, I do love nature. I I love looking outside and just seeing God's creation. And Scotland has a lot of that. Um, they had like the ocean right there too at the school. So it was just beautiful. And so that's definitely one place that's on my bucket list to, to go and visit. And so before the Lord comes back or takes me home, whichever comes first, I definitely have to make a trip to Scotland um, and explore. I don't know. I just love Scotland. Um, Australia. Yeah, you said it's not for the I creatures. Australia. <laughs> Australia has. So I read this book by um, Leo Bryson, Down Under, and you should read that book. He's one of my favorite writers. He goes like, there are more things per square feet that will kill you in Australia than any part of the world. And that really made me laugh. Like, yeah, Australia is just like, you flush your toilet, there's a spider <laughs> coming up your bar. Like, I'm like, how are you still living there? I don't know if I want to read that book because no, that it's was funny. It's a funny, funny book. Like, <laughs> after reading the book, I actually wanted to go visit Australia because there's a way of your Bryson writes, you know, uh, just, you know, perfect. All right, well, okay. um, okay. I got um, now these last two ones we have talked about it already. If you could change one thing about yourself, you 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 said appearance at first, and then you kind of did that thing of okay, let me talk about appearance, let me talk about confidence. I like to stop at appearance. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Even though I think I know what your response is gonna be like. <laughs> appearance. I think for appearance, for me, it's always been like a body image thing. Um, growing up always being compared to like your siblings or your cousins, everybody else in the family, or always being called bad or, oh, you know, um, in, 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 in an African culture, when somebody calls you fat, sometimes it's not necessarily they don't call you outright fat, but there's like other words to describe like somebody who's big. Um, and so it's always been a struggle. And I think that's where some of my um, confidence issues or self-esteem issues come from. Um, so I wanted to say I'll change my body image, like maybe make myself a little bit more slender or whatever that looks like. And then I started to think to myself, like, really? Um, but th- that's only because I don't want people to view me a certain way. But then again, people that are small uh, also have the same struggle, you know, always been called small or skinny all the time. I have a cousin, she was always really small. And, you know, my grandparents, her parents would always try to find ways of making her gain weight to the extent where it was just so extreme. And so I can only imagine like what she went through and what her story will be, her perspective on this is how I feel about being small. I wish that could have been like you, you know? So there's always that the whole grass wow. is um, and then I mean there's so much you want to unpack from there yeah. and uh, I I technically I totally understand yeah. what you mean by a lot of what we hear about our body really originates from childhood, which is why I'm very careful with the words I say to describe people's bodies that they're like little kids, like using words like chubby or fatty bum bum or oh you know or about things like that. They're sowing seeds of just that feeds into your body uh-huh. in yeah. And so much so that even when you try to work yeah. on the weight, of course, there are other layers of that. It's not quite as direct as that. If you've had some abuse in the past, that can also feed into, you know, struggles with weight loss. But it's still a part of the whole problem. Is let's be careful with our words and um, health at every size for yeah. sure. And we can all have the same body type, but make sure you're, you're reaching your health goals and you're knowing that in an unhealthy way. And I, I understand your, about confidence, yeah. be more confident about the way you portray yourself. I think that really fits yeah. in. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I and you know what, you said something very important just now. I think the whole confidence issue, if you look at it and you break it down, it stems from the same thing. There's the root which is the whole what was spoken as a child, oh you're fat or you're this. So then if that's all you hear, your confidence is shot, you know. You just got to start from scratch. And so I think even though I said not physical and said something else, I think at the end of the day, if you look at it really, it goes boils down yeah. to the same thing, the yeah. body image. No. Yeah. Because if I was... So great. If you were... No, go ahead. No, no. Oh, I was going to say, because if I was at a place where I felt like, oh yeah, I love my body, this then confidence wouldn't I feel like confidence would have been an issue yeah I can see how that ties yeah. to what you said before and then finally would be a greatest regret would be not taking a chance well it's not too late it's not too late to do that the thing about being alive is we still have that present progressive going on so I just want to encourage you and other people listening to this um, here's a cue to here's a sign you're waiting oh, for go get that thing mm-hmm. go write that paper go publish that book go slide into that DM go mm-hmm. travel to that place go <laughs> try out that food go do that yeah. bungee jumping whatever it is in your bucket list go do it you've gotten permission now to go do it life is as long as you have breath in you yeah. you can always you know get that done yeah. alright well sorry go ahead and the answer comes the, the answer comes from the calculated me I always have to look at things, analyze them, then make a decision. So by the time you do that, it's kind of like, oh, you should have done it like a long time ago. So sometimes I wish I wasn't like that. I'll just jump on things and just do them. But it takes me time. I agree. So. And I, 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 those traits can be quite useful in certain areas because if you're the opposite, you need to be, you need mm-hmm. to work on how to be less, you know, impulsive and, you know, Wait things for you get into them. Mm-hmm. I think it's just about about having the balance. And some decisions you know just overthink and just yeah. but it's good that at least you know where your strengths lie, you know where the shortcomings are, and then you're trying to balance that. All right, well that was it guys. We hope that through this expedition you've been able to get to know more about us and maybe even find your own self in some of the responses we gave. If you take this questionnaire with your friends, let me know how it goes and what you were surprised about. And if you're also surprised about some of the responses we gave um, put that in the comment section wherever you get the podcast or no, you can even send us an email we would love to feature that on our social media pages that was it guys thank you so much Linda it cannot be about me you know what you're going to get it girl you, I just said you're going to get it and I'm not going to you cancel just kidding <laughs> alright guys um, thank you so much Linda this was really fun doing this with you well yeah, All right. so much Bye fun. everyone and catch you guys on another episode of the Marissimo Podcast. Yay! Thank you for listening to this episode of the Marissimo Podcast. Well, guess what? There's plenty more where that came from. So visit our website at www.mosibyl.com. That is www.mosibyl.com where you can find hours of other binge-worthy episodes just like this one. And while you're at it, please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Podbean as it encourages other awesome people like you to listen to the podcast as well. We are now officially on Podbean. It has an app. You can catch up on missed episodes and also get a notification when we have new episodes. Do you have a question for our guest, feedback on the episode, or a suggestion for a future guest? Then please get in touch with us by sending us an email at talktomo at mostable.com or connect with us via Instagram at the Moral Civil Podcast. Cannot wait to hear from you and thank you so much for always listening.